Super Robot Wars is a multi-crossover series that brings together mecha from various different franchises into one game where you can enjoy pitting them against each other in combat, which is usually turn-based. There are many installments in the series, spanning nearly every gaming console on the market and even on mobile. No doubt that you've heard of, or watched at least one series that features in Super Robot Wars. However, this series has not had a North American release since Super Robot Tyson OG Saga Endless Frontier in 2009 for the Nintendo DS, so it is understandably not well known in the West. I'm not here to talk about the larger Super Robot Wars series, however, but rather a specific release, Super Robot Wars 5 for the PS4 and PS Vita. It's a title that I've had in my game library for quite a while, but hadn't touched after I lost my save early on in my first playthrough due to a bricked PS4. Armed with a new PS4 and a video capture system, I decided that it was time to give this title a full playthrough and record it for posterity and anyone who's interested. This will be a multi-part review, as the whole campaign is quite extensive. Now that introductions are out of the way, let us begin. Super Robot Wars 5 is a standalone game within the Super Robot Wars continuities. Yes, this game franchise has multiple continuities and multiple game series, not all of which are crossover titles. It's a lot of content to consume, but thankfully no prior experience is needed to play and enjoy Super Robot Wars 5. The plot and characters are all self-contained within the game. However, if you have watched, read, or played the series that the game incorporates, then you'll enjoy the game so much more. It was released on the PS4 and PS Vita in Japan and Southeast Asia, but the Southeast Asia release is in English, allowing it to be enjoyed by Western audiences. It's the only way Western audiences can enjoy it, in fact, since like most recent Super Robot Wars games, this title was never released in the Western market, probably due to licensing. The story is about what you'd expect from a crossover title. The premise is lifted directly from Space Battleship Yamato 2199, also known as Star Blazers 2199 in the West, an included series that is central to the overall plot. Earth is under attack by the alien Gamilas Empire, and it's up to the Space Battleship Yamato to travel to Iskandar and retrieve a device that will restore the devastated Earth to habitability. Also, you'll fight a lot of mechs along the way, the setting is merged with as many other franchises as they could make work. For example, the events of Mobile Suit Gundam happened in 2199's past. For the series that they couldn't easily merge, explicit world hopping is used, and it's this that allows Mazinger Z to make an appearance. More series will be incorporated later, um, such as Evangelion and Full Metal Panic, but I have yet to reach that point and will refrain from commenting on the details of their inclusion until it happens. To veterans of turn-based strategy games, Super Robot Wars 5 will be very familiar. The gameplay is fairly simple, similar to other games in the genre such as Fire Emblem, Advanced Wars, Final Fantasy Tactics, etc. You move your units and attack with either shorter melee-based strikes or longer range projectile attacks. Units have a limited amount of ammo and energy, with attacks consuming one or the other. This paces the fight, since you can't just throw one super-leveled unit into the fray and have them steamroll all opposition. Any unit will be worn down if the enemy can focus on them. Focus is an also another property of your units. Certain actions generate focus, and some of the best attacks consume focus, meaning you cannot just spam your ultimate attacks. Units have skills that can be used to increase certain stats for a single match, something that must be used strategically, as mistiming your use can put a unit in danger. Outside of combat, units can be upgraded using points earned from finishing maps. If this is anything like the other JRPG turn-based strategy games I've played, there is likely a DLC map that you can grind repeatedly to generate lots of said points, but since I'm a North American player using a Southeast Asian account for this, buying DLC is anything but simple. Besides, it's more fun this way. The game's soundtrack is excellent. Aside from the original music made for this title, many tracks are arrangement adaptations of well-known songs from the included franchises and series, and characters' respective themes will play as they fly into combat. While the arrangements are clearly not orchestra performances, they are still very good and enjoyable to listen to as your favorite character smashes in the enemy's face to the beat of their own theme. 
あの船冥王星基地指令のものか全訪問発射準備に入れ各ホーザ発射準備四方副砲全訪問発射準備整った各ホーザ監視方向の目標に照準合わせ各ホーザ発射準備よし打ち方始め打ち方始め Graphics are relatively simple. A top down grid as the battlefield with stylized sprites representing your units. The combat animations themselves are entertaining and flashy, often preserving the art style of the franchise they originate from. Art and animations from the original series are often used when possible, but overall it's an appealing blend that never failed to entertain. I don't find myself often skipping through them, they're that good. So far, at least. I haven't tired of them yet. Thanks for watching. As stated earlier, this will be a multi part review since I'm just making these videos as I play through the campaign. This is my first time doing video game reviews. Most of my channel is just gameplay clips to music, so I hope you enjoyed this. Like and subscribe if you want to see more, and I hope to see you for the next video.